What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight's Wednesday slate. Um, I didn't have a great night, but I got lucky to squeak. I, got, I squeaked into the 3,300 cash line. So that'll. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'm nice. Sure. And it was a, a little unfortunate. If, if Jokic doesn't have a game and maybe I get a little bit out of Barton, um, it actually could have been something because Aaron Gordon did actually smash. Um, and uh, it was it was an interesting lineup. But anyway, uh, ready to get on to a much bigger, much more interesting slate. It's a little too big, but uh, that's all right. Yeah. We got a way to deal with it. And we're going to go over a sheet. You made a nice little run last night in the uh, it was the 55, right? Yeah, we'll serve. I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, yeah. So it was one of those things where all my all my exposure was like Jokic later. So I kind of gave up on You know what I mean? You don't really feel as though you have a chance. And it turns out I didn't because the guys that were ahead of me just like always had me had me covered pretty much. Right. But it was just a very, you know, just standard type thing, uh, type build. I played, like I said, all day. I played Trey Young um, with the with the with the Knicks. Um, and then, I, I, you know, I could have done better, but it wouldn't have helped help me win. But I had uh, 21 fantasy points out of Monty Morris at the half um, uh, in that Denver game. And he was only eight percent. He kind of fizzled out. Um, and then I had Moritz Wagner who did nothing. Um, but again, the 555, you don't need that much. And then Caruso kind of chalky there. He didn't do all that much, but Jokic smashed. And I guess the one bit of good fortune I had was that when that Milwaukee game blew out, the one guy that anybody played that they left in was Connaughton. So I was able to get like an extra, like eight or 10 points out of Connaughton that he didn't deserve, you know? Um, I was like, didn't deserve whatever. He's, he's, he's always available for blowout run you know, if, if they need him. Right, right, right. Um, so uh, that was pretty much it. Toppin, you know, Toppin was an irrelevant play because everybody had him. So whether he busted, smashed, or went in the middle, I don't think it was going to change anything. No. Um, he ended up getting like exactly an amount that nobody cared. You know what I mean? Like, like right. quick, whether they played him or faded him, it's exactly the same. Um, and Barrett got there really handily at high ownership. You know, so this was a very, um, you know, sheet slate. 297 points you know that's that's good that's good, go, enough yeah. for me. that's good enough for me and uh just ready to go on to the next one and everybody all bunched up with mark Levin at, at the top yeah it's, i mean it was one of those nights where just it's just all those uh you you really didn't just needed one thing and it's it, if there was any mistake i made yesterday it was trying to maybe get a little too different okay um and i think that's that's what my thing was but this is you know it's it's beautiful but the monte morris at only eight percent actually if i would have known that i would have probably had a little more ownership even though he didn't have like a monster game i just think that that would have been worth taking. Yeah, he, was, he could have. I mean, he he lit twenty one at the half. That could have been. Yeah. That could have been something. But yeah. when you look at the top, you look at McLovin. He had Morris and Jokic. So and Gordon. So I, I was you. going nowhere. And even if it went to overtime, I would have just lost by more because he had Gordon also. Right, <laughs> so, right, right. So it, it, I think like, I think I maximized the points I was going to make in that with that lineup. To one other truth. Um, and I'm really surprised at Levine's ownership, by the way, but that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, huh? That was yeah. sharp. I mean, I don't know, sharp, whatever. That was yeah. one of those plays where everybody was saying, well, you know, if Levine plays, I'll play him at low ownership. That's what yeah. everybody was saying. And yet everybody owned him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's the same thing happened, ended up happening, even though he didn't perform as well with Mitch Rob. Um, right. Right. What, what what did I miss here? Did there are there already guys? Uh, uh, just real quick before we jump. Oh in. yeah, oh yeah. It's it's, it's a Sacramento Dallas game because there's no Luca and no Fox. Oh, did I? No, no. But I, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Sacramento Dallas. What I was just uh, what, looking at my for some reason I looking at this golf thing and it's got all oh. my guys crossed out as if they've already lost, but they couldn't have lost the tournament, right? Nobody's out yet. Right? No, nobody's out. Okay, yeah, wow. Not, not even not even remotely close. All right, sorry. once again, so everybody gets to play three matches. Right, right, right. That's Before what they I can get, they can even think of getting eliminated. So don't yeah. worry about it. Okay, good. Because I, I had a little, literally, I, I filled out one bracket and it had little guys crossed out a, a, across. A oh, 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 I was like, what happened? Nobody's out um, yet. Okay, good. All right, so let's get into tonight's slate. Um, any sort of overall thoughts before we jump into yeah, it? Yeah, first, a little bit of a um, uh, of, of, of a of a note. Um, what you call it? I'm I'm out tonight, and exactly the time it's just it just inconvenient for everybody. I'm actually leaving for the city at like three thirty. Um, not coming back till till after everything starts. So, um, not gonna be able to update anything. But you're gonna have to take everybody home, uh, and the projections are just gonna not change. Just the way it is. Um. And that's uh, that, that's my that's my first announcement. Second of all, it's an eleven game slate, and it's it's which which could be a two game slate, you know. But like we always say, the value you think exists exists at twelve fifteen is almost never the value that exists at seven fifteen. Right. So um, we you know we'll go over what we have uh, as of now, and then uh, I presume Bobby, you hopefully 
for everybody else that you'll be around later. Yeah, uh, and, and, and by the way, I'd like to say to everybody, I, we don't want to make it too much of a thing because we were trying to, you know, uh, get everything settled. But I do want to point out that we do have like Saber Sim on our site now. And uh, if you guys want to, if you guys want to sign up for it, uh, we're basically charging a very similar amount that they are. And it's just our content, con, uh, our, our stuff too. If you want to switch over and you already have Saber Sim and you want to use have both ours in theirs, um, just uh, send it to TrueDFS uh, support and uh, at MSL in our in our Discord chat. But uh, but it is pretty cool that we've got uh, we've got it up and running. I just wanted to casually mention it because we're still trying to make sure everything goes smoothly. But I do think it's cool to, to check out if you guys if you guys have any interest. Anyway, Cheat Star, what was the last thing you said? Oh, you know what? I got to remember. I, I want to ask you something. Could you pause for just a second? Yeah. All right, so anyway, so uh, back to the slate. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go through it game by game, but there is like this is a, a monster of a slate. This is like when I first looked this morning. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit tired this morning because we were working on stuff with the site last night. But uh, I I feel like it's it's it almost like made you not want to play, or it's like you really have to be dialed in because it's it's and I I'm, I'm gonna dial in, but it's just it's a it's a it's a mother of a slate. It's just a crazy. Well, well it's interesting. Like for me, it's so funny that you record. I I'd love to record this comment so that like later on, if you see how ridiculous this is. So I'm like going out today and I'm, I'm probably going to put like one line up. Right. And I'm looking at, there's just no way I'm not going to be able to put this line up. There's the easiest build like available and it's probably going to be too chalky, but like there's such an easy way to play this slate. Now it's so funny that I mentioned that because I know it's seven fifteen. that comment is going to seem so ignorant. I like, consider what can happen between now and then. But when I look at this 11 game slate, look, I look at I look at the Aaron Fox being out and I look at Luca being out. I'm like, okay, Dallas, Sacramento, then I'll play a couple of studs and I'll be on my way. I mean, it'd be great if, it, if the slate locked now, but it's not the case. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look, it, there is, there, there is, we do have some obvious information. It's like for cash game guys, I don't think there's anything tricky about this. But that's the thing is like everything that every slate that's really easy for a cash game guy is really hard. Like, yeah. Because you, you can't just do what the what every single other person does. Like anyway, um, well, let's get into it. Let's go game by game. Let's start off. Why don't you Why don't you start off with your uh, your thoughts on your Knicks in, in Charlotte? Wow, right, uh, right, running it back, huh? Same thing. So 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 Randall's not going to be in in again, uh, right? So let's see if they move these guys up in price at all. Mm, no. I still see it topping at 3,400. Um, these projections have not caught up, I guess. I, I don't know what's going on with them. <laughs> my projections are terrible right now. I mean, like, I'm, sitting here, I'm showing Obi Top with like a 17 point projection. They, they must have just put, modeled for Randall being back. That's the only possible explanation for this. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll look at it again. Now. But if, if Randall's out again, I think, all, I think everybody's at the exact same point, <laughs> right? From last yep. night. Yep. I think Barrett's 7,900 is a total smash. I think that 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 OB top in at 3,200 if he started, 3,400 if he's starting is a total smash. And then, okay, they moved Burks up a little bit. That's the only, I'm really the only guy who's giving me a question of whether to play them again because of the price. So I'll have to, I'll have to look at that again, but I can't see any reason to not play the same guys. And you know, similarly to yesterday, where you said, okay, well, you could probably should run something back. It was kind of an easier decision to play Trey. Um, but then again, I, I miss Bogdanovich at low ownership. People, people that were sharper than me played him. Um, and I'm looking at again the same same question between Rogier and Lamelo, I suppose, and Bridges. These same three guys. Um, none of them are projecting pretty well, very well. But I, you know, I don't really care. Like if you're going to play two, three Knicks. Probably want to you put one of those guys in. So. I'll just let you tell me which one to play between LaMelo, Bridges, and, and Rozier. And uh, and then I guess that's what you're supposed to do, no? Yeah, no interest in Charlotte at all for me. Um, oh, all right. I don't see any reason to try and run something back on an 11-game slate. And a team that I'm not interested in stacking, the only guys I'm particularly interested in on the Knicks are Barrett and Toppin. Um, this is, yesterday was a four-game slate. You know, I don't think we need to go crazy and, and chase the ultimate Alec. Burke's type of ceiling things, especially because like he has a ceiling game and he puts up 35 fantasy points. It's not right. like, you know, and he can get it, he can get to 40. Don't get me wrong. 
But I do think Burks on FanDuel is going to be a tough one to fade at 4,900. It's a little different when you're 5,200 on DraftKings and 49 on FanDuel. So that's that's a, that's a one that stood out to me. But I think Barrett and Toppin are, are both, uh, you know, I don't want to say impossible like to fade Barrett tonight. This is absolutely not impossible because there are plenty of other options. And it's not like he played all the minutes last night as we sort of just like – that was the one thing is that he was getting a minutes projection of like 32 minutes. And it was like, Oh, he's going to get all of Randall's minutes. And I heard every other show and they're talking about this. He played 23 minutes. Okay. Let's not get crazy where you have to lock our, uh, Obi Toppin in. Um, so just keep that in mind. I, I, I might've said Barrett before, but I'm Barrett and Toppin are the guys I'm interested in, but I do not feel like Barrett is a must play. Although he does stand out as obviously a good value play. Um, but just keep in mind that those minutes, you know, if Jericho Sims gets hot, he might, he might, or not, if, I'm sorry, if Quentin Grimes gets hot, he might stay in the game a little longer. There's Jericho Sims. If we hear Taj Gibson is out, then I would say that Obi Toppin is a really tough, a much tougher fade because Taj Gibson played 19 minutes last night. And that was what I was worried about getting in the way. And by the way, even though it didn't quite work out on a four game slate, Obi Toppin would have been the right fade to make last night on most slates. You think so? He played 23 minutes. You're going to well, count on that. I didn't know that though. I mean, well, that's what I said. I said that I was worried about the minutes going to Sims in a com- combination of Gibson. And also they have Mitch Robinson at center, so they don't really need to play big either. And Quentin Grimes ended up getting the run in the second quarter because of all that stuff. So it wasn't like he just had this obvious, I'm going to smash game at all. It was a, a struggle to get there in 23 minutes against the worst defense in the NBA or one of the three worst defenses in the NBA. This is another one that's really bad, but I'm just saying like, it's, it's no guarantee. And you also really do not need to play big against Charlotte. So just, not, just saying right now, it's not a lock by any means um, for me. Uh, Atlanta and Detroit. Do you have anything here? <laughs> <sighs> no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you could always play, what's his name, right? You could always play Kate Cunningham, right? Yeah. But not, not, not really a big deal for me. Yeah, on DraftKings, I, I'm just not really getting to – anything here um uh, that's it i don't i don't know what else to say like i mean maybe see on the back-to-back if atlanta does anything because they they kind of have a comfortable lead now on the in their for their 10th you know their playing spot um boy nothing nothing feels it, it doesn't feel like they're going to play gallinari 30 minutes like he's being projected on the back-to-back to me uh, I, I i would wait to see what happens with atlanta if, if anybody's out or anything but right now i just feel like this is feels like a stay away game to me which kind of feels weird a little bit doesn't it <laughs> like we should be doing something but it's Atlanta and Detroit you have a terrible defense against a fast-paced no defense team it just I, I don't know I don't have anything right now just too many other good plays yep all right uh all right Cheech I'll let you start it off Sacramento Indiana this seems to be the spot we're going to be attacking yeah so uh Fox is out um so and I guess the front court's out too and Sabonis is out too so I mean, it's Damian Jones and me too at the front court. And then, um, and then you get Mitchell in the back court and then kind of Dante DiVincenzo at the, at the, at the mid range court. And then you get some Trey Lyles at the front court also. And Harrison Barnes is like the middle court. You know what I mean? Like all that's like the two highest usage guys by, by, by leaps and bounds are not playing. So uh, all these guys are just in play. And then on the other side, um, I, I didn't look at it, but I, I imagine that Brogdon is really cheap on FanDuel because he kind of always is. Um, I didn't really look at it yet. I'm looking at Halliburton. If Halliburton is out, oh, my goodness. So Did we get that officially? Because I, I have him as questionable still. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So he's questionable. If he's out, oh, then, it's, oh, then, it's, oh, yeah. then it's Brogdon, you know, plus plus others probably. Um, uh, again, watch for, the, watch for the Halliburton news, but – I mean, those Sacramento guys are rating as, you know, alongside with the Dallas guys, the top, the top value of the day. Yeah, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be a nearly impossible fade on Davian Mitchell. Um, it's going to be a tough fade on Harrison Barnes or Dante DiVincenzo or Trey. Lott. Like you're going to want to at least, at least two of those guys. And then you get Damian Jones in the mix like. Huh, uh, it's the whole Sacramento team <laughs> like. No, I don't really know how else to put it. Like, it, it's it could be met to. I'm curious how the starting lineup shakes out. I guess, but I, I right now think you're 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 playing at least two from Sacramento, even on a big slate, because that's 
you just don't get usage like that disappearing. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. It's in, in, a, in a great matchup too, on top of it against a team that doesn't, you don't really worry about throwing, blowing you out. Um, no interest in Indiana for me. You could make an argument for the Buddy Heald revenge, although it's not in Sacramento. Um, right. But I do think Buddy Heald on, on FanDuel at 5,900 is kind of interesting. Um, really, at, at that moment, until we hear if anybody's out or anything, really no interest in, in Indiana. But I, I, I would I, I don't mind forcing in a run back because the game environment. But right now, I think it goes Mitchell, DiVincenzo, and then uh, or Mitchell Barnes, DiVincenzo, probably, and then Lyles, then one of Metu or Jones. I don't know who's starting yet, but it's it's going to be hard not to play these guys. <laughs> um, and I think a minimum is two of two is where I'm starting with. Is that going to be another one of those things where you have to um, where you, you need the guy starting or, or you could play me two off the bench? Let's say if Jones starts. No, you could do it, but it's definitely like I mean, I'm assuming Jones will probably start. So. We're really, you know, we're speculating on Metsu, but he's put up some big games. He's had some duds. I, I think I would lean towards giving him a shot, but, like, what are we playing him over? Like, I guess you probably wouldn't play him and, and Jones or Lyles in the same lineup, maybe. But he's fine. Absolutely fine off the bench. Just there's no guarantee. I mean, you don't know that like Alex Lenz projected to play zero minutes. He may end up starting this game. You know what I mean? If we've seen this with Sacramento all year long, it's just in every year, to be honest with you. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of going to hold, hold, like put, put, take the wait and see approach considering it's the first game of the night. Fortunately. What do you, what do you think of the, um, of the Indiana side? Not nothing. Buddy okay. Heald and Vandal. Like I don't really think much of them at all. Um, you can make the Halliburton heal, like I said, the kind of the argument. I'm just trying to look if there's prices. I think that Halliburton on FanDuel at 7,900 and healed on FanDuel at 5,900. What is, uh, what is Brogdon on FanDuel? Um, 72. Oh, okay. I, I thought he was much cheaper than that. Okay. Yeah. I think you're thinking back like five months ago, but maybe because he's been, uh, yeah, it's, pretty, it's been, it's been starting to balance out a little bit. He used to be like that weird 58 something hundred over there. He's fine. I mean, they're all it, – it's not like they're, like, glaring plays on, on DraftKings, but on FanDuel, I, I think that Halliburton and Heald are both definitely both in play. What so do you, what do you, think, what do you think about Utah against Boston? Nothing. For, D, for DFS, it's a, a good basketball game. Um, I can't get to anybody in this game, and maybe I'm missing something, but, uh, yeah, nothing for me. Well, I mean – I, I'm still in the same boat where I always can make a case for playing Donovan Mitchell. Um, oh, really? That's what, not what I thought you were going to say. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just in general, I just, the guy that I always, you know, always seems to have a ceiling. Um, but like you said, I mean, like they're playing the Celtics and the Celtics are, you know, they're, they're, they're like, you've been saying for months now, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a tough team nowadays. Um, uh, and, and so as, as far as, and as far as projections go, you're really not going to get too much out of this. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm going to either say Mitchell or nobody. Why? Who do you think I was going to say? From I just that? I just couldn't imagine saying Mitchell. Like, it's he's the highest price he's been. It's the worst possible matchup. Yeah. And and then it's like, if we play him now, then you should have just making a statement that I just always play Donovan Mitchell. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, I, I, I guess that was kind of my my thing. Is yeah. that is, is that he's always that that kind of uh, yep. That's what I'm looking for. That kind of price, I guess. No, no, and and, and by the way, it's not like I'm I'm not saying to criticize. Like I've got no, I've used him in on slates where I didn't think I was going to just because I had a really chalky lineup build, and I was like, okay, I think I need to do something a little bit different. I really like these value guys, so I'll I'll play the uh, I'll play the weird Donovan, Donovan Mitchell play. But I mean, there's no difference between him or Tatum or Brown to me in this game. Um, I guess if there was anybody I'd get to in this game, it would probably be like Conley or something, but I, I'm, there's just no way I'm playing anybody in this game and at my first look. And if somebody gets there, great. <laughs> this, I mentioned, by the way, that I wasn't going to be, uh, I was going to be out. I was not going to be able to update the projections later, but I did notice that they at least fixed the, um, the, the topping thing on a couple of sites. Yeah, yeah so I was able to, I, I did just fix that. Um, uh, I, I did just fix that. So, so that's going to be, uh, that that's now been updated and he's now showing as, as, as a good play. Again, so, yeah. Yeah. No, cheers for that. Yeah. Cause I think that he's, he is a good play, but again, I just want to point out though, to people, 
No, no, no. He's not like a locker, but I just want the projection. Right. No, no, no. I understand. But he again, he's projected to play 28 minutes. Why would he play more minutes tonight than last night? Just think about it. Like, it's possible that he does, but it doesn't need to go this way. I'm just telling everybody, like, if you're playing like three lineups, I'm probably not going to, I'm definitely not having him in at least one of them. So if he's going to be like 90% owned, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but um, just throw just throwing it out there. Again, obviously any starter at 3,400 against Charlotte, especially, but uh, we don't even, you know, I don't know. Just something about that whole thing felt a little bit fishy last night. Like when I was watching the minutes, I was like, wow, people don't realize that they actually didn't, they didn't need it because like you said, it didn't matter if he busted because everybody had him, but boy, it almost for, for a few moments, it almost felt like it was looking at it. It could have been one of those really cool fades of a, uh, of a guy who was 99.8% owned in the 3,300. Um, anyway, uh, Brooklyn Memphis sheets. What do you, what do you got over here? It should be a, a, a good, another good game. Well, I mean, it's Tyus Jones again. I mean, yep. So he's Tyus Jones. He's forty six hundred. He's starting, and you know, you just play him. Uh, I don't. I don't have much, much else on the Memphis side. Um, and on Brooklyn, uh, you get uh, you get Kyrie. <laughs> I guess. I guess he's going to play. Um, anyway, you got you got Durant eleven K, and then you have Kyrie at ten two. And they neither of them look like particularly good plays, but. How many times is Irving going to put up 100,000 fantasy points on the road without us playing him? I, I don't know. Um, it's it's a t- it's a tough call. It's projection versus instinct, you know. Uh, I can tell you that, that that Tyus Jones is a good play, and I just again I just have this idea that this is what Kyrie is just going to do now. Like whatever he plays, like the few t- games he plays, he's just going to just try to take over the game. But I don't know. Uh, Tyus Jones, the actual good play, and and not much else. Yeah, uh, no, no real interest in, in anyone from Brooklyn for me. I, um, I, I like uh, Tyus. I, I, the, the thing is, like the Kyrie thing. I think there's some there's some there's some merit to you being right, and, and you know you were right, and we, we were both right for that matter on the uh, the Trey Young thing yesterday. But I, this is because a guy has two good games in a season. And he shoots the absolute lights out against two of the worst defenses in the NBA. Right. That's that's. that's- yeah, I don't know if we need to play him on a, on a huge slate personally, but that's just me. I, I don't. Uh, if if he beats me, he beats me. But I wouldn't. I'm mean, like I don't mind throwing him in because he's going to be low owned. It's to something, but it just feels like God. We're asking for him to score like 50 real life points against. Right. Him. It's like you know, I know they play fast, but they play defense too. Um, well, you know what? The other time that I that I that I liked him, by the way, when I played him, it was a freaking like a four game slate, like a five mm-hmm. game slate or something like that. Mm-hmm when he played at Orlando. So it was a much, much is a much different situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. And, but it, I mean, it, it, look, it's play the rush. I mean, there's something to it, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just not getting there quite myself. And, and I just, I think Tyus Jones and, and I, I feel like I'm supposed to be interested in other stuff here and I just can't quite get to the Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain. I actually think Bain is, is, is completely logical on, um, on both sides, but I, I don't feel like I need to play him. Just a bunch of, of math for me, but it feels like somebody's, you know, I don't know. I, I want to revisit this one. I'll be live at 545 Eastern because I, I just feel like this is a good game environment, but I also do like making big slates small as much as possible, but yep. that that is a high total that we're, that I don't want to just totally skip over. And right now that's what I've got it as is just Tyus Jones. All right. Uh, Golden state on the back to back in Miami. Ooh. Golden State underdog by seven points. You don't see that very often. Yeah. Um, how did uh did, did, did Draymond play? Draymond he, got the, play? he got the minutes, which is all I can ask for. Okay. He had no production. He had, he uh, he had nineteen fantasy points. Um, you think he, you think he sits tonight? I think it's possible. Yeah. The only guy that I have interest in in this whole game, actually, uh. It's kind of a funny. I mean, it's just kind of a value play, which I, I think he. I think he could do it. I, I just because he has that kind of young volatility. Remember, I, I like the Kaminga. Um, uh, he didn't really do much the last two games, um, but you go back a couple of games before that. I mean, he did better, but but I guess those were when Draymond was out. So I'm just kind of, I'm yeah. kind of, I'm kind of hoping that well, if if it, if it happens, it'll be owned, whatever. But kind of hoping that Draymond gets restricted in some way, whether he is out or whether he doesn't play that much. I don't know. Um, he, that's really the only interest I have in this game is maybe it may be a, a long shot play on, on Kaminga. Uh, nothing else really for me in this game. 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, the only argument I would say about the Kaminga thing is if you're going to do it, it's like one of those things, again, if you're going to play him, just play him every night then. You know what I mean? Like, it's there's nothing – this is the worst matchup in basketball for him. Um, well, arguably the Celtics, I guess, would be worse. And I, there's no, like, rhyme or reason to why he's a good play tonight. His minutes are totally all over the place, which is what every, happens with everybody in Golden State. And – even when he's at it consistently, he's been consistently around 20. And, and when he got into the mid twenties, that was when Draymond was out. So if Draymond's out, I guess he is viable if Draymond's out. That's um, what I'm looking for. Yeah. I think that is fair actually. But, um, but it's, I just, ugh, this matchup is not, not a lot of fun. Nope. Uh, I like the under on this game, by the way, too. Um, the Miami, I, I don't know, man. Like it depends on who plays. Like if, if, if Butler and hero don't play, like, of course I'm going to play Lowry, some Lowry and some bam. How did Lowry do yesterday? Oh, I was I, I nailed it with the other night in, in Philly. Um, he had 41 fantasy points and he was 50. Well, that was two nights ago. Okay, I thought it was last night. Okay. Yeah, but I mean that was you know what he ended up sheets at 50 at 5,400 on FanDuel. He ended up two percent owned. And and he put up and he put up 40 whatever fantasy points, and he was great. He was the yeah. on every winning lineup, you know what I mean? And that's that that helped me out, obviously. Um yeah, I, I as of right now, if Miami's healthy, I'm not gonna not gonna play Miami. Uh, Phoenix, Minnesota, any interest for you here? Well, sure. Um, this, you can, re, you can rewind, uh, to our, every other, every other show we've done in the last two weeks. Yep. Chris Paul is out. Devin Booker's under 10 K. I'm going to play him. Um, yep. Uh, especially in a competitive ish game, um, against the fast team. Uh, let's go. It sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the other side, cat 10 K would be my, preferred guy from that team but i don't know maybe he's not such a bad play. i mean like if Embiid gets gets really really popular um maybe 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 cat could be a could be a pivot off of that um you get the game to go kind of nuts uh uh maybe that works so he, he'd be my favorite um i don't get to the other minnesota guys too much uh, uh as much as you do um and maybe that's not even that much so i don't know i, I like cat a little bit and i definitely like Booker. Yeah, it's uh, the same thing as always for Minnesota. Um, could play any of these guys. Right. Don't have to play any of them. Um, I'm totally with you on on uh, on Booker. I definitely will be playing Devin Booker tonight. Um, I think he's a he's actually like a standout play for me, and I don't I don't care that he had. So now, I mean, look, let's just look look at it from an overall perspective. He's had one down game basically since Chris Paul was out and it's like he had 36 and a half fantasy points and he just he guys missed shots and I think game ended up blowing out if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember why he only played 32 minutes, but didn't get his full run. And even in the games, he hasn't gotten his full run lately. He's getting to 50 to 55. Like, I just feel like, and this is Minnesota. Like, I feel like he should be a priority play on this slate. And I'm really surprised to look at early projections and ownership that just have absolutely zero interest in him. And I will be on the other side of that, but I, I'm having a hard time on Minnesota finding anybody I like. They're playing really good real life basketball, which uh, does come sometimes at the expense of fantasy production. So uh, that's, you know, if obviously if cat's out, we are going, I, I just don't cat all cat when he's questionable plays like more than anybody. <laughs> like he's it's, he really plays and bead and bead and bead does the same thing when he plays when he's questionable, but then he ends up getting, he ends up like being out without being questionable. Like, you know what I mean? So that's the only, but, uh, but anyway, I, I don't, I don't know what minute I don't have any interest in Minnesota. I just want to attack the totals of this game, but I, I just don't have any guy in Minnesota except for maybe Patrick Beverly. Um, what do you got for Orlando and OKC? All right. I got some. Um, so I, I was going to say, if I'm going to build one lineup, I was going to just, put, you know, I said, I could play all that cash stuff from the Sacramento game, all that cash in Dallas game, play B or something like that. And just, you know, go to dinner and not have to worry about much. You know what I mean? But all right, I got something if you want something. So, so Shea Gil, Shea Gil just Alexander is always, probably always a good play nowadays. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's, you know, I, I have him projecting what well, FanDuel, like 35% ownership or whatever it is as usual. Um, I happen to have had FanDuel up. Um, I presume he's a good play on DraftKings also. Um, and if, if you need any more proof, I mean, he's 9,700. Remember when, when one of the things I, I commented about, um, when about Kyrie the other day, I'm like, Cole Anthony's not going to be able to guard anybody. And, and, and I think that this is a really good matchup for Shea at 9,700. And so if you really want to try something and he hasn't gotten there in like three weeks, 
But on the other side of Shea games, there's always the other guard, okay? And I just noticed that Fultz is out to th- this game. Yep. Uh, and, and, and Suggs remains out. So I will take a shot at a no-owned Cole Anthony uh, opposite Shea. That's something I could totally do and then play freaking chalk in every other position pretty much and, uh, and just hope literally for one thing to happen. You know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> have that game go, go, go crazy with these two guys not guarding each other. Um, so I, that, that, that's definitely something you can do. Neither – I mean, the, the, look, Shea's going to project to be a good play. But Cole Anthony, I have to, I have to, I have to search really deep, deep down the list. I have him ranked like 31st as far as values go. So you have to find it. You're going to have to have a little faith because when you do a little, a, whatchamacallit, a game log watch, I can't find a single a single game on his resume here that that we like. I mean, like in the last like 12 right. games or something like that. But I don't know. I think the combination of Fultz being out uh, and Suns remaining out and the Shea matchup, I don't know. And just the desire to get different in some way. I don't know. I, 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 would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I, I, you know what? I, t- I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I, I really like it. And by the way, I would add. If, wait, wait. And if Carter is out, for example, I mean, that's more usage. Yeah, of course. Of course. If Carter's out, I actually think you're going to start getting a little bit of ownership f- flying your way. I'm probably not going to make this play because we don't need the other value tonight. But I'm just going to say that I really do think it benefits RJ Hampton not to have uh, sure. uh, Markel Fultz. And I, I do think that, it, you know, uh, I, I would put him as like a, a potential guy who I could see like, you know, Oh my God, well, how did he 10 X all of a sudden? That's, that's sort of like where like, and, and that's enough of a reason for me to take some shots on him in tournaments. In addition to the other value, probably not instead of he's only um, 3,900 on FanDuel, by the way, also. Yeah. It, 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 uh, just a, just a weird like play, but I do like the Cole Anthony idea. I think that there's an, it's interesting. I think all of these guys are a little more relevant, but I really hope we know about Carter earlier because that does open up like, Oh, Kiki is, would be a, an interesting play. We could talk about Mo Bamba and Mo Wagner. Um, probably it helps Cole Anthony. It helps Franz Wagner. It helps Hampton. Like all these guys get, you know, they just, yeah. everybody becomes much more interesting in a game with a good total. And where, like you said, we want to play Shea on the other side. Um, presuming Shea plays. <laughs> presuming that he plays, of course. Yeah. Um, other people are in, like, I like, like Trey Mann is a, is a really fun tournament ride. If you haven't had it before, like <laughs> he's going to take shots. He's going to be all over the place with his efficiency. You don't really know what kind of games you're getting from him. The one thing you know is that he, like, he'll, he definitely, he'll rebound. Um, he's 5,200, and, I mean, he put a 50 fantasy points the other night against Boston, and it was the only reason why that game was remotely close enough to keep Boston starters in the game. I, yeah, blah, 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 I, don't, I don't know, like, what I want to do here with Trey. I don't know if I want to play Trey Mann, but I do want to play Shea Gilds Alexander, and I do want to play Devin Booker. That's my... Those are my, I'll, I'll have that guard combination all over the place tonight. Um, that's what that's what I want to do in this game. Everybody else just feels like a, a big question mark to me, including Trey Mann. And just because he scored, you know, 51 fantasy points doesn't mean he should be projected for quite as high as he is, although 5,200 is probably a little too cheap. So Mann is on my list, but he's not a guy who I'm heavy on right now. All right. How do you rate the, uh, the Mavericks? The, so I always go, I always go road team first. So every time we do that, <laughs> we still haven't gotten our oh, team down. No, okay. no, no, I'm just kidding around. Um, no, no, it's a, it's a legitimate question because it's really the interesting side of this game. The other part doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I would say Dinwiddie, Brunson, period. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do anything else. That's probably it. Yeah, so Dinwiddie for me is the best play, and then um, and then Brunson. But I I could play both of them together. I, I really don't have any problem with that. Um, the next guy I have rated actually actually on a point per dollar basis, well because he's cheaper. I do have Reggie Bullock um, rated uh, rated as a good point per dollar play. He's not exactly the greatest guy to play fantasy. Just if we're playing like, Reggie Bullock on eleven game slates, I don't know. Right, like, just well, I'm, which is, I'm just reporting. No, no, I hear you. I'm, I'm get, I'm, I, get, I get it. I see the I see the projection, and, and people are going to say, "Oh, but he scored thirty whatever the other night. And he made yeah, he made six threes, and now right. it's Houston." But like honestly, he doesn't necessarily get an uptick because Luca's out. Like he's exactly. probably better with Luca. Sorry, she didn't mean to interrupt you. No, actually- that's, what, that's what I was going to say. He's a guy that's going to project as a good point per dollar play, who just just not really a good fantasy player on an eleven game slate. I mean, especially when I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like you, you probably were going to want to play Dinwiddie and, and or Brunson and. I don't know if Bullock's a good pairing with either of those two, you know? Yeah. Um, 
anyway, other guy uh, who's going to show up, as he always does, is because I imagine Kleber will continue to show up. Uh, DFS will probably just continue to show up. And Dwight Powell's actually had some games. Um, yep. So maybe, maybe he's actually the, 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 the play. Um, but so Dinwiddie, I mean, you're probably going to end up with, the, with one of those two guards, right? Between Dinwiddie and Brunson. It just, it's just way too much usage to disappear at the, you know, with the ball handling and neither are particularly expensive. Um, and Houston's not particularly good defending people of any position. So um, that's, I, that's pretty much what I got for Dallas on Houston. Uh, no, <laughs> I can it. Uh, just no, I, I don't really like anything. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's the kind of game where I could see Christian Wood going nuts. <laughs> Um, so I actually have some interest in Wood on the other side, but I that would be saved probably for a Dinwiddie and Brunson together lineup. And by the way, and and I and, and as much as that Christian Wood has given me reason to, to show that he has upside lately, I don't expect him to make eight out of nine threes again, <laughs> like he put up when he put up 63 the other night. I don't expect him, you know, to shoot 80% from the floor like he did a few nights before, but he did put up 70 and 63 recently. And Dallas with the non, not, not real interior presence. I kind of like what you said, like Dwight Powell has some, you know, his, has actually like had some up, shown some upside. Um, and it's come in the strangest way, like in, in real life scoring points. Um, yeah, weird, huh? Yeah, it's not, it's not like what we're used to with him, but we have to remember that, you know, these guys are still, he's, what is he, 25 now? Like the, the there's still room for guys to take a step up. So I don't know that I necessarily need to get to Kleber or Powell or anything, but I, I just thought I'd mention it. And, and the, the Bullock thing is like, I'm not saying there's a 0% chance that I have Bullock in any lineup because the games later, we may get some Q tags throughout the day. And like, I might want to later stack and, and use guys as fillers. And he's not the worst play if you end up stuck with him. But I just think that you're really asking for, you know, trouble if you generally see Reggie Bullock at 4,200 on an 11 game slate and say, oh, I'm going to play that guy. You know what I mean? It's like the Danny Green thing. I mean, remember yeah. we had the sheets last year with Danny Green where they had a uh, Embiid and everybody was out at Ben Simmons. Everybody was out for Philly and Danny Green was like 80% owned and had like four fantasy points in like 28 minutes. Yep. I and they, then they all come back the next night and he yep. has 68 fantasy points. Yep. <laughs> just like yep. crazy. Yep. The ultimate troll. All right. Um, well, here's where the, I think the chalk spend ups are going to be sheets. Uh, why don't you start it off? Well, so I think that between um, uh, Embiid and Harden, I think they probably get 135 fantasy points between the two of them. So the question is how do those, how are those going to get a portion? Is it, are they not the second gonna, half? Right. But I mean, are they each going to get 65 or is one going to get 90 and the other get 45? And this is always, it seems to be a question when you have these situations, whether you have, when, when look, when Harant, when um, Harden was with Durant, when AD was with, was, was playing well and was with LeBron, you know, we had two big studs. Like how, how, how do you approach it? I think you, pro, I think to not play one of them, you're just really asking for a perfect, like non-result. You know what I mean? Like, I think that, I think that one of those guys is probably going to be in the winning lineup between Harden and, 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 and Embiid. And if not, it's just going to be because I can't even imagine why it would be because they both got like literally exactly 58 fantasy points or something like that. Um, which is very, it's a lot to ask. So I do think that probably one of those guys you probably want to play and look, you can always just, you know, like you did the other day, man, just, just play LeBron, <laughs> especially if you got something good on the other side. Um, so uh, LeBron Embiid, LeBron Harden, uh, I think I think both of those things obviously make sense. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to play LeBron here, um, but I think you you know he's certainly it's an interesting idea. Like to run it back, he's going to be low owned. Um, he will be he'll be higher owned on Fanduel because it's just really easy to get him in. Okay, but LeBron at low ownership is kind of interesting if you think about it. Just from well. Embiid and, and Harden can can help each other carry a team and 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 by the way they just won the game without those guys right like right. Um, LeBron kind of has to do everything right now. Yep. Um, I'm gonna bring up a really weird play here, and I can't be the only person in the industry who thinks this is gonna possibly happen. Dwight Howard may play until he fouls out tonight, 
and he's being projected for 16 minutes. Now he might foul out in 16 minutes, but what are they going to put Wenyan Gabriel and then what you're going to run double teams at Embiid, which you already are the worst team in the NBA at double teaming and then recovering. How are you, how is it going to work? Like, unless you put Dwight Howard out there. Um, so I think Dwight Howard is going to be my sneaky uh, play of the night uh, tonight. And it's, it, it doesn't feel good. It's, it's totally matchup specific. And by the way, I don't even think there's another center in the league. I would try and do this against um, with Howard. I did try it with cat. He didn't get all the run, but again, cat sort of, you know, he can linger on the outside and so can Embiid shoot it from out there, but mostly he's going to, if he, if he gets the little guys on him, he's going to go in there and pound the hell out of you. Um, I think Dwight Howard plays minutes tonight and that's enough of a reason for me to have some interest because I honestly don't know what the Lakers other plan would be. It would have to be Wenyan Gabriel. I just can't, I just don't know how that works against Embiid. Um, I know it just feels really thin. It's not one of these plays you should be trying to, to set aside. Oh, we got to make sure we get Dwight Howard in, but just, you know, do yourself a favor if you're running multiple lineups, get a little bit of exposure to Dwight Howard. It's worth speculating on that, that situation because with that kind of size, I, I mean, and again, like you could also like consider Wenyan Gabriel, but like one of the, if, if they just hate Howard and they, they wouldn't play him any minutes and he's just him getting a little bit of run and then you get the Embiid matchup. I just feel like maybe you're going to see a little more Dwight Howard tonight. That's just my take. Um, well, well, it's also, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a late, um, it's a uh, whatchamacallit game. It's a late big game. And if you, if you, you know, burn all your teams early and then they announced Dwight Howard starting, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he'll be starting. Oh, you think so? Oh, he starts still? No, they just started, they started, they started starting him again, but they're mostly letting him, uh, when in Gabriel take over the backup center run, but they don't have another center. Like there's not like another guy on the roster they can use. And when well, Gabriel, he, well, when did Gabriel, what about what's wrong with him? He played 32 minutes last game. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's whatever. He doesn't, you know, Dwight Howard can go out there and get, tw- you know, 10 and 35 rebounds. <laughs> like he can get, you know what I mean? He can do things. When in Gabriel is just sort of on the court. Um, well, he's got to be able to get, I mean, he's going to get rebounds by default, right? I mean, like who else is going to get them? Who? I mean, if Gabriel plays 30 minutes again, I mean, like, well, he didn't barely get there last game. And oh, I know, I, I know, I get it, but. And there's no logical reason. I mean, first of all, Taylor Norton Tucker is going to be back. So that'll change their lineup okay. a little bit. Um, well, at least he should be back. We don't know for sure that he's back, I guess. Um, but those minutes could just as the minutes are just that's just random minutes. Like that's not, you know, the Lakers are not, there's no rhyme or reason. Stanley Johnson plays seven minutes one night, gets 30 the next night, then he's down to 20 again. Like it's just the Lakers rotations are just all over the place, all over the map. And, and they're almost always missing bodies too. So it's, it's kind of tricky. I mean, DJ Augustine the other night, what did he play? Um, played 26 minutes against Cleveland the other night. Like, where did that come from? Uh, out of, you know, out of nowhere. And he made every one of his shots. It just, I'm just talking about a real play. Like I'm not trying to get thin value with the Wendy and Gabriel. I'm, I'm specifically thinking about an MB style matchup where I could see Dwight Howard playing against him and, you know, did play with him actually for, you know, so I, I think there's, there's some, there's something to it, even though it's, it's definitely a little bit on the thinner side. I think I, these are the kind of plays that you, in my opinion, you try to make to, to try and, you know, take shots to win tournaments, but definitely a little bit thin, obviously. All right. Uh, San Antonio and Portland. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, um, Portland side, the, uh, just kind of know you like to take the road team first. I'm going to go right for the, uh, to the home team. Um, starting with Portland, um, the, the guy who's projecting to be the top point per dollar play on, on the team today is, is Ben McLemore for what that's worth. <laughs> um, probably not worth that much, but, uh, but he's projecting a full six X. I mean, maybe has he been starting? I don't, I don't no, know. He's not starting. He got hot the other night. So oh, is that what happened? Everything's in the same exact situation he's been in the entire, since, since all the guys were traded, he, uh, never started. I've, as I said, every night and every night while he let me down, you can always play Ben McLemore because he can always get hot. He can also do nothing. Um, I would describe this as incredibly, incredibly thin with, with 10X upside. So definitely worth it taking shots, but not worth taking shots for me at ownership with any ownership. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll get, we'll get to, and then Chris Dunn, like once again, I mean, let's see what, hit, what, what his minutes have been doing. Um, he had, 20 so he's in the 20s in the mid 20s he's in the mid 20s maybe upside of 28 
like whatever it is. Um, 4,200. Like to think there's might be better plays, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we did, yeah, we played him at 3K. It's kind of tough to play him at 4,200. Um, I don't know. I guess he hasn't been starting. He's been coming off the bench, I guess. I guess Brandon Williams has been starting, I suppose. Yeah. Um, okay. I just figured I'd throw it out there. And I was going to make a ridiculous case that Chris Dunn is a really good defender still and that if he was starting, that maybe. I actually, think, I actually think he is a good defender, but yeah. What I was going to say is, is that like, maybe DeJounte Murray isn't such a smash play because Dunn could do something with him, but it hurts that actually Dunn wouldn't be starting. Um, for that narrative, whatever that's worth. Right, right, right. Uh, so getting back to that, uh, Dejounte Murray is 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 a good play every day. He's ten three. I have at fifteen percent ownership right now. Um, there's obviously blowout risk when anybody plays Portland, but um, I've seen I've seen him get sixty and three quarters before the game blows out. I've also seen him like in the last couple of weeks, been a little more you know not as ceiling oriented. So it's not like he's a lock or anything like that. But I do have him as a very as kind of a top play. Um, so maybe it's a late game. People won't play him as much. So I'll, I'll be, I, I'll definitely, you know, again, I'm probably not going to do it because again, I'm playing one lineup tonight. Mm-hmm. Maybe I will, maybe, maybe I will play. Him. That is definitely something I could play because it's a late game. So if stuff happens, I could do something with it. Um, so yeah, I do. I do like DeJounte Murray. And as far as other guys from this game, let me look at any of these San Antonio dudes. Um, yeah, I guess Potal is always good, I suppose, 6,400. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I just want to point out that DeJounte Murray, this is not a coincidence. And I kept, I keep trying to mention it on air, like every time we, we do shows, that the huge portion of the, the crazy ceiling games, not all of them, but most of them, were with these with Nikhil Alexander-Walker out, which he's out tonight. But Devin Vassell was out for a good portion of those games. They didn't have Josh Richardson. Nikhil Alexander-Walker? These guys were all – the Keel Alexander Walker is out tonight, right? I didn't even know he was on San Antonio. <laughs> I, I'm not Nikhil Alexander Walker. Sorry, uh, his, his cousin, uh, Lonnie Walker. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I, I did that all the time. They're cousins, and I okay. – so, which also – yeah, anyway. Um, but but those guys were out before when he still was really smashing. And the truth oh, okay. is, like, there's only been one game that he's had that's usable in the last, you know, month. Um, so let's not, let's, I just want to temper expectations a little bit, okay. like, you know what I mean? And, and I, I just, I just don't think it's like an automatic, he has to go nuts spot. However, it is a great matchup. You don't have Lonnie Walker. And I think that the the best play in this game is probably like, if, if you want a guy like who, you know, maybe you haven't seen the ceiling from him cause he's 20 years old, he just turned 20, Josh Primo at 35, yeah. I, I would take shots on that guy. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I, you know, and, and then again, so Primo or Macklemore, I'm okay with like mixing into like lineup builds, but I just, it feels kind of thin to the Macklemore thing is just, it feels so chasey, but it doesn't mean he can't have another good shooting night against a bad defense. Um, but you're just counting. I mean, he's, so he, he plays 25 minutes every night sheets, but tonight they decided to make his projection instead of 17 fantasy points, like it always is. It's 22 because he right, got right, right. It's just one like one game. of those things, you know, and do we, do we, do we just chase that? Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like right. good DFS play to me, but at the same time at 3,400, sure. He can shoot himself into a game and low on play. The guy I like in this game is the guy who let me down in my, in my 3,180 that could have taken me to the top for, for the 125 K the other night. Um, I think justice Winslow is going to have a really big Ooh. game. And I know it's not the most sexy play. I don't know how much of them I'm going to end up with. I just think that against this this trash, awful defense of the of the of San Antonio, um, with with what should be a, a little higher usage than the last game, because I don't expect Ben Mclemore to make every three, and everybody else to make everything that, 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 that which is what happened to them. That's how they got ahead. Um, they ran some funky rotations, and maybe they don't want to play Winslow a ton of minutes. I, I that's all worried. That always worries me. But I do think at 5,900 that Winslow is, you know, not like maybe 50 fantasy points, but I do think he's got a good chance at 40 plus tonight. Um, and that's, you know, I'll always take that at 5,900 pretty much on any slate. Not the most exciting play, but I do think he's a really solid guy. Um, maybe you don't want to go out of your way to target him, but if you end up with two spots left, you can use him as one of those. I do think that's a viable route. Um, so he's really the only one who's, you know, who stood out for me on that side, except for maybe a little long shot on Macklemore, but the problem is he's being owned like not a long shot. Um, I don't really know if I can do anything else though here. And, and DeJounte, I, I think that it's, you know, DeJounte or Primo on the other side, 
The one guy who actually I didn't mention, you know, we I'm sorry, I forgot to mention is uh, Podal. I know we haven't seen great games from him lately, but at 6,400 against a team without any sort of defense at all, it's interesting. And Keldon Johnson has been smashing. So one of Podal or Johnson, I actually think I would probably play those guys over DeJounte Murray tonight. That's that's my personal take. But uh, Yeah, I like the Primo play, actually. Yeah, I think Primo's, Primo's the one I would most like. And then I... Primo play. <laughs> the Primo play, you're right. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, we got... Let's see. I'm just going to really quickly go through uh, through my guys. Uh, we've got Toppin, Barrett, and I'm not saying these guys are all like, these are just guys who I have as priorities and we're going to have to make decisions on. Toppin, Barrett, uh, all of Sacramento. You're going to want two of them, in my opinion, at least. Um, Booker, SGA, um, Cole Anthony, I, I do think is a good long shot play. Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Jalen Brunson. Joel Embiid or Harden, Dwight Howard, LeBron, you could include into that mix. Um, and then I would go uh, Primo. And then I, I do like the Winslow thing a little bit. And I don't mind the idea of Podal or, or Kelvin Johnson. That's it's, it's actually a smaller, I think I have less guys on my list than I did yesterday. I mean, yesterday was four games. Today was 11th. <laughs> kind of weird yeah. Enough. So I, 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 only, again, I only wonder what's going to happen between now and then, but um, it is what it is. Yep. Um, and that's exactly right. I mean, what I, I, I think this, 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 this Philly thing though, I think you're going to want to, I like, I like what you said about that. I do think you're going to want one of Embiid or Harden. And, and I think my natural thing would be to Embiid, but I think that's most people's too. So I don't mind Harden. And, and I do think that you could almost, boy, it feels weird on this kind of a slate to say you could play them together. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I think it's, I don't think it's that out of the question. It's not like we have Giannis. We don't have Jokic. We don't have, you know, some of the other top spend ups on the slate. That's true. So it's, it's not the worst idea because we do have some value. Um, Chief, any other thoughts before we get out of here? Nope. All right. Good luck, everybody. And I will see you live at 545 Eastern.